Warning, this video is intended for a mature audience. You understand? Viewer discretion is advised. Yay! <laughs> All right, this is Billy Bob Tanley here, people, and this is a request from Cyborg Parrot, and it was uploaded by Brandon Tenold, and the latest video is Brandon's Cult Movie Reviews Creep Show. Okay, let's check it out. Yay! All right, here we go. I bet this is going to be nasty and fucked up. Yep, a horror movie. I see some legendary ones in here. Chucky, yeah. Pumpkinhead. Uh, sup, killer clowns? Yeah. There's a lot of them, man. I haven't seen every horror movie, though. Join us now. Okay. Hmm, let's see. What should I do for Halloween this year? Yeah, it's Halloween as I'm recording I'll talk about this. about a movie series that takes its inspiration from old horror comic books. I can't Looks possibly like see the having crypt. any problems with that. No, they love blood. Oh. Well, That's my, this movie okay. wasn't put out by Universal, so I should be okay. Well, you are, but don't mean I will be. YouTube, they, 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 you know, affects everybody else different ways. Creep show. We'll see, though. We'll see how this goes. All right. Creep show is a 1982 horror anthology that was a collaboration between Man, that, director George glasses, Romero, damn. famous for the Living Dead series of films, and writer Stephen King, famous for being, well, Stephen King. He's Stephen Come King. On, the most famous horror writer of the past 40 Who's years. Who's this? Don't act like you don't know who he is. Creepshow was intended is. as an homage to horror comic books of the 1950s, primarily ones put out by EC Comics there like we go. Tales, Tales from the, the Crypt. Crypt, Vault of Horror, and The Haunt of Fear. But rather comic than books, adapting man, big stories deal from then. these comics directly, Kinda they instead decided books. to recreate the look, tone, and style of the comics for the big screen using was stories written foot? by King. Which gives this movie the weird distinction of being one of the greatest comic book movies that isn't actually based off of a comic book. Oh, so it's we've not? got two titans of the horror genre finally working together for the first huh. time. What could go wrong? Let's see it. Nothing. See. Sometimes I do movies I like on this show. Okay. But it happens. So anyway, we open on a quiet suburban home during what I assume must be Christmas time. No, it's Halloween. I see a pumpkin. I didn't want you to read this crap. I never saw such rotten crap in my life. Where do you get rotten this? crap? Ah, come on. Zombie Tramp isn't that bad. What the fuck? No, wait. He's actually berating his son for reading a horror comic book. This has parallels to the real-life moral panic about horror oh, comics man. in the 1950s, which actually led to EC publisher William Gaines having to testify before Congress that comics weren't a bad influence, as well as the creation of the Make Comics, comics Code for Authority, kids. which Make imposed strict for censorship rules that led to EC's horror titles getting Put the canceled. fucking age thing and on there. A lot of that moral panic was stoked Rating. by... This guy, Dr. Frederick Wortham, whose book Seduction of the Innocent alleged that comic books caused juvenile delinquency and almost single-handedly killed horror fuck? comics for decades. Ironic, I considering remember. he looks like somebody who'd normally be hosting a horror comic book. Oh well, might as well throw this in the trash along with his issues of Fangoria. Well, <laughs> another successful day I was of never disciplining a big comic my collector. son. Now to enjoy a beer and get to work on my wife for letting my dinner get cold. You see that crap? All that horror crap? Things coming out of crates and eating people, dead people coming back to life, people turning into weeds for Christ's sake. You okay, didn't take it easy, fuck? pal. I'll give away the segments of this movie, <laughs> alright? And don't worry about your dad, kid. This nice undead ghoul will help you the out. Here's hoping here? this one doesn't also come with a bunch of <laughs> bad puns. So the first segment is called Father's what Day. Was it doing it's there? about damn time somebody made a horror movie about that. Why should all these other holidays get all the attention? I'm not Halloween. sure why this family of rich douchebags is gathered together, but I'm assuming it's so this lady can kill some Dalmatians for a fur coat. Okay, the actually shit, they're man. waiting for their Aunt Bedelia to arrive. Isn't she the one that was supposed to have... I feel, I feel like I'm, I know this guy. Uh, if someone in your family committed a murder, you might want to be a little more discreet about it. They don't give a shit. Eh, what am I saying? They're rich. They'll probably be fine. Oh, hey, what do you know? At one point, Ed Harris did have hair. 
<laughs> Kinda. Oh, here's another thing you'll notice about this movie. At various points, the film makes use of fake comic book panels, backgrounds, and effects. Since yeah, King and Ramiro they wanted should to do not that. only emulate the tone of old horror comics, but also get the look this of them is down not as supposed closely to be the comic as possible. Book, no. Somewhere a Looks young like a movie gets show. inspiration for a comic book movie that's the Hulk? not as fondly remembered as this one. Which Hulk is that? They explain that's that, that years earlier, Aunt Bedelia murdered her father, Nathan, who is somehow yeah, younger is than silly. she is. <laughs> That can't be scary when you're doing that. Okay. All right, look, I know he's annoying, <laughs> but there's no need to kill him. Just drop him off at an old folks home and forget about him like everyone else does. Even though this movie That'll successfully work. captures the look of old horror comics, it's surprisingly less gory okay. than a lot of them were. The Vault of Horror. Bedelia then covered up Nathan's murder by saying he died of autoerotic asphyxiation. And every wait, Father's wait, Day since, the family gathers to pay their respects by getting liquored up so they can piss on his grave. Unfortunately, Epidelia learns a harsh lesson about spilling Jim Beam on a dead guy. It's gonna bring him back to life. Yep. That makes sense. Oh no, Nathan's ha back and he brought the movie's trademark red and blue light. You turned that him. already? I, this ain't scary, man. <laughs> well, I suppose it's something that saying. says it wants cake is better than one that's hungry for brains. Cake? Even though Dan O'Bannon is the one who thought of that and not John Romero. I watched well, a few of those one way to follow up a days. scene like this. That's really? right, with Ed Harris dancing to disco music. What, did you think that wasn't gonna happen in this movie? The real reason for this sequence was so Ed Harris know, could show man. off the new skinny jeans he bought. He also searches for a suitable place for a smoke break. Well, this spot looks like it's on the up and up. Uh -oh. Nice of the cemetery to also provide smoke machines and mood lighting. Ooh, right. and it also comes with jump scares. You know, well, what even comes without that? the comic book panels, Ramiro still delivers shots that look like they're straight out of old horror comics. I'm getting Ed scared, folks. might want to be a little careful, though. How? Well, that's kind of weird. Guess I'll sit here and see where it goes, though. Can't it move out of the way? Come on, man. Oh, Who the shit, a zombie. I should probably get up. How'd he get there? I am curious to see what, what this stone's going to do. What the fuck is this? Now this is dumb. Right, yeah, you had that coming. You know, I had a feeling that's what was going to happen, but I wanted to. Could have sure. played a better role. I don't think than the that. zombie even needs to kill this lady, since by the look of it, she's been dead inside for years. She looks dead inside. My dear, I really couldn't say. No doubt he's still out at the grave, hobnobbing with your aunt Bedelia. Well, I want him, and I want my dinner. I'm hungry. Aren't there some <laughs> servants you can yell at? Sylvia goes to Snobs. find him herself, presumably so she can scare the zombie back into its grave. Mrs. Death. Oh no, the servant's dead. Now she How might have happen? to do stuff herself other than drink and smoke. This guy is not scary. Oh, okay, he can smack me. Which in her case is probably a relief. He ain't no Jason, he ain't no Myers. Hank, go see Richard, please. You're all so bad. Hey, here's an idea. Why don't you look for him yourself if it's such a big deal? See, no reason to you be can't afraid. Say that There's no, nothing in here it but makes more too much sense. lighting. Well, maybe that's not quite all that's in here. Starters. <laughs> I got my cake. Jeez, Uncle Nate, I know you're a zombie now, but you couldn't have sprung for an ice cream cake? And hey, the old this DC comic scary. stories had abrupt shock endings. Why should this movie be any different? The next story is The Lonesome Death of Jordy Verrill, and the title character is played by none other than Stephen King himself. Is that who hey, that it was is? the 80s. King was so coked up at this point, he also offered to do the lighting, <laughs> editing, and catering on the movie. Just yeah, he's definitely on something. Busy. Anyway, King plays a country bumpkin who sees a meteor crash land near his farm. Uh, now, it may seem a little I think egotistical Gaze for someone Brown. not known for being an actor to cast themselves in their own movie, but to be honest... That's a meteor. I'd be no, that's a chunk of that shit. A meteor. Oh, you done it now, Jordy Farrell. You monkhead. He's actually pretty good here. It's I mean, yeah, stuff. he's over the top and silly, but that's the point. He's playing a dumb <laughs> hayseed. It's not like the comics the movie's taking inspiration from were subtle, so fuck it. Swing for the fences. 
I wonder how much they'd pay for it up to college. Where's uh, Leatherface at? Steven, I know you think this meteor is going to make you rich and famous, but trust me, just write the novel Carrie and the rest will fall into place. Unfortunately yeah, Carrie, for Jordy, he forgets that he's an inbred moron and ends up wrecking the meteor. Jordy Vero, lung kid. The hell's he doing? Vero luck's always in. You spell that kind of luck B A D. <laughs> I thought luck was spelled M O O N. Good news though, Idiot. Meteor contains a brand new flavor of Gatorade. Maybe you could try selling that. I thought it was Blue Meteor Gia's. Shit. Mm, Meteor not shit. The name I'd go with, <laughs> but you're brainstorming. All right, okay. time for Steven to relax that before was he his starts first working thought. on the script to maximum overdrive. And before anyone in the comments says anything, sure, I'll think about doing that movie too someday. Uh -oh. oh, looks like Jordy's got a chia pet infection. You better call the chia doctor, pet. or at least fantasize about it. He's fantasizing? That's dumb. If I seen a doctor act like that, I'm out of there. Steven's so gacked up, he won't feel a thing. And damn it, George Romero, quit having such stylish shot compositions. Didn't you hear the dad at the beginning? This is supposed to be trash. Jordy realizes he's been infected with an alien fungus from the meteorite, although considering Fuckin alien guys, I knew it. it was pretty likely he was going to get infected with a fungus anyway. In fact, not only is the Troll? fungus spreading all over his farm, it also brought some green lighting with it. Come on, movie, quit being so colorful. What are you Look trying to be like me. a comic book? Oh my god. Oh, right. Never mind. Well, there's yeah, only one me. solution to this problem. Get as hammered as possible, then hope the hangover is bad enough to make you forget about the fungus. Uh, but it may already be too late. He's turned into the Hulk. No, not there. Or not on my thing. cousin, fucker. What the hell? <laughs> what is the villain from Poltergeist 2 doing in this movie? Oh, okay, that was actually, creepy. this is Jordy's ghost dad who explains that water is what causes the fungus to spread. Shit, it really is a chia pet infection. But yeah, hey, that's definitely Jordy still chia has pet to get infection. into the bath anyway. Scary. How else is he gonna become Swamp Thing? Oh, I already said Swamp oh, Thing. See, we're we think You know, lot. considering EC Comics were known for gruesome twist endings, something tells me Jordy isn't gonna get rich off that meteor. No. He's gone. Now it's turned to troll too. Just this once. Wow. Okay. You should have went the to the hospital. Of Oscar the Grouch finally revealed. Oscar the Grouch. So the next story is something to tide you over, which stars Ted Danson and Leslie Nielsen. Oh what? boy, this segment ought to be hilarious. I know him. That may work on TV, Mister, but I, I see can him too. press three hundred pounds. You better get your foot out of the door. You're gonna lose about half. Yeah, right, Ted. You think you can bench more than middle-aged Leslie Nielsen? Don't think Break so. Break that door down. <laughs> Don't call me Mr. You know, He's a legend. I am, so let's not play any games. I know him mostly from the naked Don't call me Shirley either, asshole. Leslie plays a rich psychopath who discovers his wife is cheating on him with Ted Danson and demands that Ted follow his orders he or else something very here. bad will happen to her. Leslie Nielsen playing a bad guy, but he only does comedy roles. That's what I'm known If you ignore mostly. his filmography before Airplane, where he was usually either a romantic lead or a I didn't bad watch guy. his movies way back. Yeah, turns out Leslie Nielsen had a long film career before the He was in the Scary 80s. Movie 3 and Scary Movie and 4, And there's a reason Leslie played villains Rest for much peace, of his sir. career. He's actually really good at it. You listen to me, Harry, and listen carefully, unless you let me in and talk to me something very Yeah, nice. he's threatening him. Yeah, and then you'll never know. And believe me, Mr. True Love, you want to know. It's my thought. Yeah, turns out that cold, deadpan he delivered comedy lines in is also really good at delivering villain dialogue. Yeah, he's a good, good villain there. Point. I call my beach house Comfort Station. Is that camper Let's kitchen? get ready to happen here. Mm, I'd say this movie's more of a loving homage, but those words work too. Leslie tells Ted to bury himself up to good. his neck in the sand or else he'll shoot him. Well, I hate sand. That's the worst place you can be. Do what I told you. This is what happens when Frank Drebin finally loses his shit and decides to become a supervillain. Well, look at it this way, Ted. This okay, is still less embarrassing than your Friars Club speech. Money. Wait, what? Look, I am money. I'll give you anything. Just get, just get me out of this hole. Okay, come on, Ted. How much this money do you got? Before you were cast on Cheers. We all know you're not rich yet. This will oh, okay. lead to some wacky hijinks. That great video. I love this stuff. What the fuck, man? You know how hard your heart is beating here? Wow. <laughs> How fast 
and just drown them and shit. All right, Leslie Nielsen's a versatile actor who can both be funny and an effective bad guy. I forgot. He's mostly Leslie known for comedy. Ted to drown though. when the tide comes in. Damn! Oh yeah, the Ted tide. Danson were able to breathe through his forehead. He might be able to stay above the tide. And I know I've brought this up in other videos, camera. but remember when the idea of being under constant surveillance was considered creepy and sinister? No, oh, well, I guess we'll just have to get used to the fact that everything we do is constantly recorded. Don't you just love being a human? We can't breathe underwater, really, but fish can. Hey, is that a PS4? What are you doing? Special right. bean cannon? killed your cheating wife and her lover. Now to sell the tapes oh, the to Faces wife. of Death and make a handy profit. Before that, though, time to unwind by watching his Best of Marilyn Chambers VHS. Uh, Leslie, I don't mean to interrupt, huh? but I think the smoke monster from Lost is at your door. The no, smoke, no, that's my actually smoke a couple weed. of monsters from a Scooby-Doo episode. And wipe your feet, will you? You're messing up Leslie's carpet. What? You can tell huh? shit's getting serious because the is camera angles and colors are going them? all Battlefield Earth. The main difference being this movie doesn't suck it's donkey balls. Alright, if you're at all familiar with EC Comics, you can probably tell where this is headed. I'm not really familiar with it. They're zombies. And he didn't give a shit his guy's gun as like he knew they were coming. You can't escape us, <laughs> Leslie, unless you can walk faster than a shuffle. Back up. And, hey, where you going? <laughs> Get back here. Dumb. This is a comedy. Well, Leslie should have known. It's the transmission. This movie was made in the 80s, which means horror movie villains can teleport. They can. Oh, well, at least the least can do it. Awesome so can comic Mars. book panel shots. And in case you forgot, Leslie Nielsen can also be funny. Hey! <laughs> they turned the camera on. Wow, he's laughing. <laughs> Yeah, that's the good uh, opening right there. Put that song. The next story shit is called it, The like. Crate, which is my personal favorite of the movie. Oh, Hal shit. Holbrook stars as college professor Henry Northrup, who's married to Wilma, played by Adrian Barbeau. This is Henry and Wilma Northrup. Oh, just call me Billy. Everyone does. She tells people Billy. that because she has the same hairdo as Billy Squire. Henry's a little upset no. with Wilma always drinking and constantly belittling him, although he does look happy to be in what a better fuck? movie than Girls' Night Out. What's the matter with you two? You're not drinking? Oh, honey, these people are dry. Now take care of them. Kyle, so shit is that you're drinking. That I was out of line. I told him he ought to get laid. Oh, God, Henry, You are fucking drunk, now? slow, the fuck. You're supposed to spend all time playing Emily Vanderbilt. Or Emily Van Buren. <laughs> The hell are you Whatever talking about? I don't know what the big deal is. Wilma's drunken behavior isn't that different from mine on every live stream I've ever been on. <laughs> Still, I think I Henry might be getting too about fed being up. drunk. What the oh, fuck? Thing, Wilma. Why? Fine. Oh, Henry, can't you do anything right? What the hell just happened? Oh, no. imagine that. Well, that's sad. When they first got married, Henry's fantasies about unloading on her face were a lot different. I don't know why he keeps fantasizing about killing her. So she's a drunk loudmouth. Just wait a couple a decades sock, and she could get her own reality show. Oh, right. The story's called The Crate. A janitor finds a crate from an Arctic expedition dating back to the 1800s in the basement These of the These movies University are cringe as fuck. The the series, I mean. They better hope John Carpenter's The Thing isn't in there. Actually, the crate even says Carpenter on it. Uh, well, I'm sure whatever's go. in here now is you know. completely harmless. <laughs> What took your? What the hell's wrong? It just has more red and blue lighting. The crate contains a monster that was nicknamed Fluffy by the crew. What the fuck? Kind of looks like a monkey crossed with a wampa. <laughs> Listen, don't worry about the janitor. What was he doing in there? We can just get one of the interns to clean up while we look for a replacement. No big deal. There's only one thing Fluffy hates more than being woken up from his 150-year nap. Why is he still in the box? Don't have any horror movie awareness. I want that shoe. Idiot. Should the bite marks. Maybe we can figure out. Please kill him. What we're dealing with here. Let me guess. This guy has two days until graduation. And this is what happens. It's not a very tall monster, is yep, it? Yep, I was right. Hey, come on, don't be afraid. Tom Savini worked really hard on these the effects. What's wrong with the professor fight? goes to Henry's place and tells him about what happened, and Henry's got the right idea. The stupid, booze isn't stupid, enough. Stupid. Time to bust out the prescription shit. Weirdly no. enough, not only does Henry believe the story about the crate monster, he also sees it as a perfect opportunity to get rid of the seven foot tall by killing her. Or eight Look, foot tall. Henry, there's no need to feed her to the crate monster. I mean, I mentioned John Carpenter earlier. He'll take her off your hands. 
Yeah, for I don't a know. while anyway. Hey, no fair dressing up like Dexter, Hal. I'm the only one who gets to look like Dexter in this video. Henry tricks well, Will into meeting him at the university. For you. And again, if you're fed up with her drinking, you could just tell her to join AA. Killing her seems like it's she going a little stop. far. Ah, but what am I saying? If she went to AA, we wouldn't get more awesome Tom Savini monsters. Hey, honey, look. I found a crate full of vintage cognac in the basement. Why don't you go check it out? However, Fluffy both picks dead. a bad time to be camera shy. Same old Henry. Afraid of your own shadow. No good at departmental politics. Bitch. No good at making money. No good at making Worst money? Crate monster. What, did he win this house in a contest or something? I'll take that house. No good at all in bed. And I swear to God, if you ever touch me... Oh. Hey, baby, forget about <laughs> him. I'm a real beast in the sack. <laughs> call you Billy. What? Seriously? Tell the call you Henry Billy? then collected Wilma's life insurance money by saying she died of liver failure. First, though, he's got to get rid of the evidence. He didn't seem very scared by that. What the hell are you doing? Um, quiet. Okay. You know, for as cheap as jump scares can be in horror that was movies, very cheap. when you actually take the time to earn one, they can be pretty effective. Fun fact, Fluffy's also I, how that the mob scare me. of Jimmy Hoffa. How do you lock it up the there? perfect crime, I guess. So, the question is, what happens now? There's no evidence of foul play, I've seen that. Uh, uh three people you knew are missing, including Prince. your wife. I'd Who, say you know? there's a pretty good chance the cops are still going to investigate you. Yeah. yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. Nobody's going to believe Fluffy's testimony anyway. So the last Did segment that monster is just called they creeping up on you. And I'm just going to say this right now. Uh -oh. If you're even slightly grossed out by cockroaches, you might want to skip this part. No, Petro okay. character actor E.G. Marshall I'm grossed out a little bit, but they mostly Wilson piss Pratt, me off. Who kind of looks like Larry Fine in his retirement years. He does. Cock Roaches. Just think about that. That's the name of them. Cock and Roaches. And apparently he's also a big fan of Evil Dead. Pratt is something of a germaphobe, which I guess explains why his place he, looks like a Bond villain lair. Oh, I found another cockroach this evening, George. Oh, no. What about a pussy people? roach? Right here in my $3,200 a month penthouse apartment. $3,200 a month? Shit, that's almost enough to run a closet in San Damn. Francisco. If Pratt's so concerned about cockroaches, why doesn't he just move to Canada? It's too fucking Those are large for him up here. And in case you hadn't figured out that Pratt is supposed to be an evil rich guy. Oh, he's evil? Oh, Couldn't tell. What a monster you are, Mr. Pratt. And how I will rejoice when you're finally dead. Lots what the hell? I want to rejoice when I'm dead. No, when you die, people are probably going to puke. You'll <laughs> see what I mean in a bit. After oh, Pratt gets finished okay. taking care of his roach problem, he can unwind by playing his state-of-the-art 1982 You need to call pest control, rig. man. First, you got though, this big dinner. problem. Oh, fuck that. I'll be moving out of that shithole. Hey, don't get upset. Roaches are very high in protein. <laughs> oh, and if you think this is gross, buck no, up. No, going to get a lot worse. Looks like Pratt better call an exterminator. <laughs> Gather them all, put them in a giant glass, and burn them alive. I might have a 24-hour fumigating, sir. <sighs> I might be able to get Pirelli Brothers out here by, huh? shall we say, 1130. How do you get Pirelli an hour? Brothers? Okay, hopefully it's Dumb and Dumber Pirelli Brothers and not Three Stooges Pirelli Brothers. Yeah, those are some movies. At least now I know what Joe's apartment would have been like if it had been Too made by roaches. Howard Hughes. One I bet there's a king in there or queen. Movie. You can kill him for real and no one will give a shit. <laughs> Seriously, imagine no, they don't have no fucking soul. And not immediately trying to kill every roach you People saw. People want to eliminate you roaches, you trust would. me. And keep in mind, this was made in 1982. There's Ugh. no CGI here. These are real roaches they're using. Ah. Good thing Pratt has a roach panic room. But wait Release the gas. What the fuck is this? A flamethrower is sounding really good right now. Pyro from Team Fortress, do your job. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a reasonable response. Oh, and remember how I said it was about to get a whole lot worse? They're going to crawl in his mouth for I wasn't skin. kidding. They're coming out of his mouth. Okay, they're going in his mouth. Okay, yummy! Who's all eating watching this? It's at this point that all the guys who brought a girl on a date to this movie realize that they probably weren't getting laid that night. <laughs> so that's the last story. Yeah, they kissed and that hey, Tom Savini did great work on the effects for this movie. Well, if you it's see a cockroach, folks, think about that movie and kill him. 
authentic voodoo doll. Somebody already They're reading that. the comic there. Yeah, we can't get that. Damn, I never got any voodoo doll coupons in my comics. All I ever got were those stupid mail order monkey ads. Darn and before you ask, what? yep, that was a real thing you could get back in the day. Really? Time for little Billy to get revenge on his dad. Oh, is that the boy from Chucky? Andy? Oh. No, that's not that is. Oh fuck! I hate kids, man. Doing this shit, evil little bastard. The moral of the story is, kids, if your parents don't let you read the comic books you want to, then <laughs> kill them. That was the the beginning, or right? The kid the something. Beginning. And you can't kill your dad. <sighs> he still needs to stop the Silver Shamrock commercial from killing everyone on Halloween. <laughs> I thought I'd leave mentioning that okay. Tom Atkins playing the dad until the very end just to see how many people this said, reminds me of, seriously not going to mention that's the guy from Halloween 3? This reminds Can't me of Tales of the Dark the from the Dark Side. Despite being pretty different from other horror movies at the time, Creepshow was still a hit at the that box thing. office, and it even got pretty good reviews, although some critics didn't seem to get the movie's deliberately <laughs> was goofy. cheek comic book tone. <laughs> Which is weird, considering the movie makes this obvious right from the very beginning. Just stick to that style. And I'm not just talking about the fake comic panels. Really, the movie's tagline the tells comic you all panels you made it know. more. It's the most fun know. you'll ever have being scared. This Wasn't isn't meant to be a pretty disturbing horror movie. It's a colorful, fun one. Although it still has an R-rated edge to it. All the tropes of the nasty. old EC horror comics that inspired it are here. The sixth sense of humor, the bright <laughs> clashing <laughs> colors, the shock endings, the unlikable characters getting their comeuppance. Andy In Wah! Fact, this movie does a better job of capturing the look and feel of old horror comics like Tales from the Crypt than any of the Tales from the Crypt movies. It's just and remember, I actually shit. liked Demon Knight. Yeah, There's plenty you of scarier that. horror movies out there, but very and few somebody have else the sheer too. sense of joy Romero and King clearly had paying tribute Creep to the horror show. comics they enjoyed when they were young. And because the movie's an anthology, that left the door open to almost endless possibilities for sequels, which I'm sure means this went on to become a long and well-respected I don't think it series. did. Right? No. So there you go, everyone. If y'all want to watch the original video, the link is in the description. Go check it out and shit. And I'm getting the fuck out here, so yeah, yeah. My name is Billy Bob Tenley, and I approve this message.